the culture, the play style, all the stuff that comes into being on this team. Um, hopefully we can kind of get the ball rolling just a little bit quicker and get to a little bit more more stuff as we go. Obviously availability, a big deal for Caleb Farley, but how much further along would you say he is from his rookie year to now being a little more available and coming back? Yeah, I think he's done a great job this offseason. I really do. Um, I mean, he's working hard. He's in there. He's engaged. He's working his way back. Um, we'll kind of see where that goes, but you start starting to see him kind of mature and figure this thing out, what it takes to be a pro, everything that goes into it. Um, I mean, when you're a rookie, you got a lot of stuff coming at you, right? So I think everything's slowing down for him from on the field to off the field. I think he's just got a better grasp of, of what it really takes at this level and developing into being a complete pro. With the defense having made the progress it made last year, for you guys this year, like what is taking it to the next level, the next <clears throat> step for you guys? As, as yeah, I mean, obviously it wasn't good enough, you know. Um, so we gotta we gotta find out what we did well, and we've been studying that. Um, we gotta find out what we need to improve on, which we've worked hard at all off season as a coaching staff and with these guys, um, and really make our strengths even stronger, and make sure we're fixing and changing the things that we struggled with. Um, it's an ongoing battle. It's week by week as you guys know in this league, um, but really focusing on the things we can do as a unit to improve and hopefully get us where we need to get to. What have been your uh, first impressions of Roger McCreary? And I guess maybe at this stage, what are his biggest strengths? Yeah, he's, he's come in and done a really great job. I think the thing that stands out to me about him, he is, he is competitive in everything he does in the meeting room. Um, he wants to have all the right answers all the time, and that's unrealistic as a rookie, um, but he, he cares. Like you can tell he loves the, loves the game. He loves learning the game. He loves playing the game. Um, and those are the guys you want in here and those are the guys you want to coach. Jackson following up, uh, Theo Jackson, maybe what are your thoughts on him as well? Yeah, he's done a good job since he's came in. He's done a good job kind of handling everything. Um, we throw a lot at these guys, especially that position. Um, and I, I think he's been able to take the coaching and learn, not make the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, I've been pleased with them. We'll kind of see as this thing goes here throughout the rest of the spring and in the training camp kind of where he's at. How's Rashad done so far and kind of coming back from his injury, Rashad Weaver? Yeah, he's doing well. He's mixing it back in now here a little bit. Um, it's good to see him back out here doing some things. And he's been around the building a ton, you know, and I think it's been good for him kind of being able to have those meetings with Crow. Um, go through things, learning, and you can see a difference in him. Despite being injured, you can you can see a difference in his development, even with missing all that time. One person emerge for the Crookshank role on tight ends, or is that a piecemeal thing? Yeah, we'll kind of see where that goes. Uh, I mean, as we get into training camp and we start getting into one-on-ones and some of those types of things that we can't do right now, um, we'll see where it goes. But you're always looking for guys that can cover on third down. Uh, whether it's a tight end, whether it's a receiver, whether it's a back, uh, that's a big piece of what we do on third down. With Mosey on Brown and Rashawn Evans, um, how have you liked David Long Jr. stepping up into a, more of a leadership role and then obviously taking a little bit more on out there defensively? Yeah, I think David's done a great job. I really do. I think his uh, approach day in and day out, he's, he's taken that position, that role by the horns, and he is running with it, right? We got some young guys in that room. Some guys who Dylan came in here mid-year last year, um, and he's really the solidifying force in that room right now. Um, I've been really pleased with him. I think he's trying to become more vocal out there as well. Um, and I'm excited for him. I think he's really excited for the opportunity, and it's very deserving with what he's done here, especially last season. Um, and I'm excited where he started with this thing. I'm excited to see where it goes as we get into training camp. What's it been like, I guess, having been back in the same building with Tim Kelly and from a coaching standpoint, what does he maybe bring to? Yeah, uh, it's great. Um, obviously, worked with Tim in Houston and then going against him here these past couple of years. Um, anytime you got smart football minds, you can bounce ideas off of, whether it's a defensive mind, offensive mind, whatever it might be, um, they might see something a little bit of a different way. Certain things they've done in the past potentially attack us. Um, all that knowledge, all that insight is always valuable regardless of who it's coming from. Expect to see a different bud 
this year, both in terms of you know the full year away from the ACL and also a full year in the in the system? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see when he gets back here and gets rolling. Um, we'll see what it is. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to him getting back, and I'm excited to uh, kind of see where it goes for him. Front four, such a good force for you last year. Consider that start from zero. It sounds like Bud's not here. We know they, they weren't here last time we saw them. How much do you start with a blank slate, or how much do you build on where you, where you were? Last yeah, time? I think it's a fine line. I think you gotta you gotta build on where you were last year, just in terms of confidence and um, their ability to understand and affect the quarterback working together. I've always said it. It's a group thing. It's not about one on ones. It's a group effort up there in terms of affecting the quarterback. But with everything, you got to start from ground zero. Like. All these guys, they, they leave us whenever the season's over. We don't get them back till mid-April, and who knows what they're doing, right? So, I mean, you always have to start from ground zero with everything we do. Um, but I hope these guys have some comfort level with what we did, have some confidence from what they were able to achieve, and they come back with that as we get going. What do you think is... Opposing offensive lines are going to try to deal with Jeffrey Simmons. How much do you kind of have to be creative in helping find ways to free him up? Yeah, I mean, I, that's always the thing we look at when we go into game plans. Um, looking at their personnel, looking at our personnel, how the, how we think they might handle us. Um, I said it last year. I think adding Danico Autry was a huge piece for us last season because it it kind of limits that. You've got another interior rusher in there. They can't block them. They can't double them all, right? So they're going to have to pick their poison too, and it's a matchup blitz. So we're trying to find matchups. They're trying to find matchups or guard against some matchup deficiencies just the same. So I think it's week by week. But having those pieces, whether it's Harold going inside at times, obviously Danico, like I mentioned, um, having those pieces makes it a little bit more difficult on offenses to be able to game plan somebody out more comfortable are you, uh, Shane, in, in your role this year? A year ago, you know, questions were being raised and so forth, and, and uh, I would imagine things feel a little differently. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just being around the guys the whole off season last year, into the training camp, bouncing room to room, all this stuff that we've kind of talked about in the past. I think the relationships part, you guys have heard me say it before, I think that's probably the number one piece in being a coach is you got to have relationships with these guys. Um, they got to know you care about them, care about what's best for them, and obviously what's best for the team. Um, so I think those have grown throughout the past year. So just in a different space in regard to that right now from where we were last year. But again, man, it's a new year, so we're starting fresh, and we still got a lot to prove. Yourself right now, but what'd you make about all the change in the AFC this year with new receivers coming into the conference, the quarterback changing, and what does that do to a defensive coordinator during the offseason? Yeah, it makes you stay up at night in the offseason, right? <laughs> that ain't supposed to happen in the offseason, but um, no, it's, you're going to have challenges across the board. I mean, AFC, NFC, everybody's got good players, everybody gets paid. Um, again, we're, we're focused on the things we can do that isn't solely about talent, right? Our focus is working on the effort, the fundamentals, the details, the scheme as a coaching staff, whatever it might be, to put our players in a position to succeed where talent is the outlier, right? Like, because everybody's got talent, we're looking for the things that can make the difference for us, regardless of talent.